Welcome to this year's Easter painting. I think we both have an idea of what we're going to do. Canvases. Canvas on. The only rule is that it must be Easter themed. Yeah, so we shall just get started. Hayley. Yes. What is your favourite thing about Easter? Um, I don't really do a whole lot for Easter. So I'm going to say because Easter is like a spring sort of thing for me, I'm going to say going and seeing like the little lambs. Little lambs? And that sort of stuff, you know? The little lambs being born and daffodils, you know, the, the nature part of yeah. that time of year. Well, my favourite thing about Easter is chocolate. <laughs> End of conversation. <laughs> to be fair, I think everyone loves chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tell you what, we must try this year though. Hot cross buns. Yeah, I've never tried. I them really before. want the ones out of Asda's and their vanilla and flavoury or something. Oh. And they sound so good. That's white. Yeah. So yeah, we shall get some hot cross buns to try. Sure. Although we went to the church thing last week with the kids for Easter. That was good fun. We got to make like little Jordans. Ah, oh, we made little crosses as well. Yeah, we made origami crosses. Which was most enjoyable. And the feathers, which is always one. Oh yeah, we had baked potatoes and ice cream and jelly. But our local town is looking for a new minister. So they wanted to take lots of pictures and videos and things to try and attract as a new minister. Try and lure one in. And I think that's the Church of Scotland. As we have three churches in our town, believe it or not. So if any of you guys watching are a minister, <laughs> there's a place for you here. Yeah. But it's good that they, they do stuff with the kids. Oh yeah. It's kind of sad. I feel like the whole like, religious side of this. You know, yeah, like all the kids there dead. couldn't answer a single question about what Easter was actually about other than Easter eggs. And, uh, well, it's mostly uh, adults there. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's just culture now, isn't it? It's kind of... It's not taught in schools anymore. Like no, it's, it's kids. not. That's another good Easter question. What is your favourite type of Easter egg? Brand, I suppose, would be the word, better word. Um, I'm not that fussy because I eat any kind of chocolate. <laughs> you do. Uh, but you do. I do like a lint. But to be honest, any Easter egg. Do you remember when we were kids, Easter eggs used to come with a cup? Yeah. They don't think we're up anymore. They're bound to. Some of them I are think burnt. there's teddies and stuff now, really. Oh, well, no, I'm not against a teddy vibe. BRB. So, Michael's going for a more traditional Easter picture, and I'm going just for something fun and cute. So, we've gone totally different vibes. Did you like Easter as a kid? Yeah, we used to get lots of eggs. <laughs> yeah, do you notice know, as you get older, the egg count goes down significantly? It does. That is. Why does that happen? Do you think that kid will still get as much eggs as we got when we were kids? Eh, uh, no. I don't think so. I think as kids get chocolate more often than what we used to as kids. Yeah, it's like less special, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chocolate was a treat when we were kids. And like now it's just an everyday thing. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, to be honest, I grew up in a fat family, so there was always chocolate. But do you know what, viewers? I'm going to have to touch a gold. It could be madness, or it could be the stuff of genius. I'm thinking like sand, you yeah? know? Okay, I'm going to conduct an interview with Haley based on chat GBT. You ready? God. Okay. What colour is the Easter Bunny's favourite? How, do, how the heck are you supposed to know? Yes, I, I don't know. This is chat what GBT. Was it? What's the answer? It doesn't give you that. Oh. Whatever you want it to be. <laughs> How many Easter eggs do you think you can find in the backyard? What are these questions? Answer the question. Ten. Interesting. If you were the Easter Bunny, where would you hide, honey? Uh, under a tree. Under a tree? Yeah, like behind the trunk. What do you think the Easter Bunny's house looks like? Small, cosy and colourful. What kind of treats do you hope to find in your Easter basket? Chocolate. Mm -hmm. Chocolate little mini eggs. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe, ooh, maybe some hot cross buns or some little pancakes or something. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Easter Bunny has any friends? Yeah. If so, who would they be? The Twisby. Okay. All the sheep. 
All the sheep. Yep. Just all the sheep on the planet are the Easter Bunny's friends. Yep. Won't you? If you could design your own Easter egg, what would it look like? And what kind of chocolate would you use? Hard hand questions here. Something like a lint chocolate, but more vanilla y. Ooh. And it would have like an Aztec -y print on it, and it would come in a colourful box with lots of different greens and yellows. I see. Yeah. Uh, I made the ears too far apart, but there's nothing I can do about that's it. That's fine. Now. That's fine. Nothing can be done. <laughs> what animal would you choose to deliver Easter eggs if not a bunny? I could cheat and say a hare, <laughs> but it's like a bunny. Uh, it's just cheating. And that's your disqualified. Uh, yeah, I think a little bear. A oh. cute bear. A little bear? Yeah, I think a bear could be cute. I think I've got the best answer here. Go on, a kangaroo. A kangaroo. It's got a little pouch. Yeah. They could carry many Easter eggs. That's true. If you could have any su if you could have any superpower to help find eggs, what would it be? Ability to smell chocolate. <laughs> so strangely accurate superpower. Fair play. And that concludes the end of your chat GPT quiz. Yeah, thanks. So it says if you if Haley were an Easter animal, she might be a playful Easter bunny. Hopping around with enthusiasm and spreading joy to everyone she meets. That well, doesn't sound too much like me. It doesn't know you. <laughs> I wouldn't talk. Do you want to have a crack at the adult questions? Okay. You won't manage. That'd be weird. What is the significance of Easter in Christmas tradition? Christmas? No, sorry. Christian tradition. What is the significance of Easter in Christian tradition? Jesus coming back to life. Look at you! How do different cultures around the world celebrate Easter? I don't know. What are the origins of the Easter egg hunt? Uh, I actually don't know. Nor do I. How does the date of Easter vary each year and why? Because of leap year. Is that actually why? No, I don't know. I've just answered what I think the answer is. Well done, Hilly. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, what are some traditional Easter foods eaten in different countries? No idea. Chocolate? Well, it's, some, it's always to do with bread, isn't it? Because that's what Jesus shared. I, I, don't, I honestly have no idea. What are some famous Easter traditions or events held in your local area? Um, when I was younger, every single year we used to have on our high street a hat and decorating competition, a egg and spoon race, um, the you know that you get in a potato sack and you jump and you yeah, race yeah, to yeah. The, the finish line, um, and a uh, egg decorating competition every year. Um, so, but that doesn't happen anymore. Kind of sad, though, isn't it? Like a lot of them traditions kind of just don't. Yeah, I, I cause like my niece and nephew will never get to experience you know that sort of stuff we had. I think when kids were really young, I remember going to the church hall with them. And Nanny had decorated them an Easter hat. Did she? Yeah, yeah. Because the kids won. They all won an Easter egg. Of course they won using your Nanny's eggs, man. Yeah, but my Nanny had been decorating Easter hats for us since I was the wee, so... Exactly. No one's going to be that chance. She was an expert. Yeah, but nowadays I don't really think there's much, apart from... The church goings on. Well, in the town I grew up in, there was none. There probably would have been a church service or something to that effect. Oh, there's always a church service, yeah, but it wasn't ever something we attended. Nah. We didn't grow up in a very religious family. I think my mum is on and off now, being religious. I don't know. Yeah, she's kind of religious. I don't really know. Yeah, we still took part in Easter sort of act town activities. Oh yeah. And church services with the school. Yeah. So my little hinting is not going great. To be fair, you did pick something difficult. I'll be honest, he loves picks on my league is well done. However, we shall persevere. It's hard to get that perspective right, you see. Yeah. Have to use lots of shadows and such. And that's the problem considering I don't know how to paint shadows. Do you have people who view you from different countries? Yeah. I would love to know what their traditions are in their country. Yeah, well, it's more a religion thing, isn't it? Rather, I don't know. I, I think it's like you're right. It should be a religious thing, but it's like probably not so totally religious anymore. Do you still, at any age, expect a, a, a Easter egg, or do you get given Easter egg, or do you buy your own Easter egg, even if you're older like us? <laughs> like Michael always buys me an Easter egg, and I get him an Easter egg. When is Easter? Sunday. I, I was. I just. 
Move it last minute, otherwise I know if you'll eat it. I wouldn't. We would. We'd put on a movie and be like, should we just get them now? I wouldn't say we. We would. You're the one with zero self-control when it comes to chocolate. <laughs> you take no encouragement, though. You would let me do it. Oh, that's absolutely true. See, I think navigating adulthood when you don't have kids is a totally different experience to navigating adulthood when you do have kids. Because I feel like you have to be like the mature role model for your kids. Whereas me and Michael don't have any, so we don't have that. Right, we have to do this because otherwise it's a bad example. Well, you know. Oh yeah, we can just embrace our bad behavior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, we we get away with being childish more than what I think most people would. Childish. In the way that we get excited for like Christmas presents and like. There's no one stopping us to rum it from rummaging under the tree, really, except we do, each other. We do that. You know, you don't have a parent or a kid sat there expecting you to yeah. behave. Oh my god, where's is this leak? It's a white paint. For crying out loud. Jesus, I think I need a bigger paint. Let's have my caves looking so far. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be honest, I'm not a particular big fan of it either at this moment in time. You always do this effect. I love it's very that effect. unique. It's my center. It's my yeah. um, calling card. Calling card. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, and we've been playing Risk, and I've been asleep a lot. So. Yeah, you've been a sleepy little sausage. Yeah, I've not been productive. But I wouldn't say that because sometimes you just need rest, and especially you find off on infections and all. I think you're more than entitled to have a lot of rest. You gotta look after oneself, you know? So, another thing that happened when we went to church. You know how Haley said that they fed us? They did. They even gave us dessert. They gave us jelly. And you know what? I was talking into my red jelly, thinking that was the cat's pyjamas. I was eating it. I was loving it. And Haley's like, oh, little Harvey was like, no. Haley was like, oh, little Harvey wants a uh, red jelly. Can we trade you for an orange jelly? And I was like, no worries. I like orange jelly anyway. They had me it. I'm scoffing my new orange jelly, thinking, what a good person I am, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> and then I'm like, ooh, what's this? Uh, a hair was in my jelly. Not if I still scoff the jelly, because a hair is a hair. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out there was a conspiracy against me. Well, no. Let's be honest, it wasn't. You conspired. Harvey noticed that there was a hair in his jelly and he didn't want it anymore. Mm -hmm. He's just fussy like me. And I says, oh, Michael won't mind, he'll, he'll have it. So I just traded it, I didn't tell Michael, because otherwise Harvey wouldn't have had jelly if Michael had said no. <laughs> Which I would have. <laughs> Horrible. You still had it and you still enjoyed it. I did. Everybody wins. Oh, your painting's cute and shit. It's not, by the way. Mine's still dark. Yeah, but you've gone traditional and I've gone like modern Easter, so they're very different. In a dream world, I would have a house full of cats. <laughs> I truly, truly believe if we didn't meet you, would be like a crazy cat lady. Yeah, I okay. would, yeah. See, when I first met Michael, I was 17, and it was just through like friends sort of thing, and Michael was like the pursuer, I would say. You make me sound like some kind of... No, you were just the pursuer. Like, I, I I, was one of those sorts of people that just wasn't fussed about boys and that sort of thing. I just was in my own little world. My sister was like the girly girl boy crazy sort of person. I, I guess, so I was very animal orientated. I wanted lots of animals and, you know. So, yeah, I would have definitely been a crazy cat lady. I had two cats at the time. They were my little babies. I don't That's know how we got into cats. Oh yeah, you call me a crazy cat lady. Oh, well, I said you would turn into a crazy cat lady if you were by yourself. I think I'm already a crazy cat person, to be honest. You think it's ridiculous how much I spoil the cats. It is. You Easter Bunny. I kind of think that's me done. I might wait. I might wait till it dries a little bit. See what it looks like. What do, What do you think of the little paint? Ah, they yeah, give me the three crosses. Mm. What does that say? Jesus in Hebrew. I does it. You You actually wrote Hebrew. Yeah. I'm impressed. You should be. <gasps> Phoebe. Don't be naughty, Phoebe. Have I said what my favorite chocolate egg is? No. When I was a kid, it was Maltesers. Really? Hmm. 
Did you always get like a Easter egg that you wanted from your mom dad? Oh, heels. I don't think you understand my obesity. <laughs> it didn't matter. If it was chocolate, it was the right no, Easter egg. No, but did you always get like, an Easter, uh, uh, like a big Easter egg or like a cool Easter egg from your parents? Just about what the shop was on. <laughs> <laughs> we would come down on Easter morning and our eggs would be sat on our chair. Oh my god, that's so proper. See, we looked out though because we grew up in a hotel and there was like tons of staff and they used to buy these Easter eggs as well. Really? Yeah, so we would end up with like 20 each or something like this. Something like 20 that. Easter eggs? I'm sure it was about that, yeah. We thought we were spot. We would get like maybe five. No, we used to get a ton. I actually remember vividly putting on a nice outfit to go and walk around the halls. A nice outfit? To receive my Easter eggs because I knew this after getting it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm not joking. Just walk around expecting it. Yeah, but it was like every year. So like you knew it was coming, you know? <laughs> I just walk through the bars, getting a pack of crisps. <laughs> I was there for everyone else. <laughs> I can't believe that you say that so casual. <laughs> it's 100% true as well, but they want to see me, they want to give me it, so I was doing them a favour with <laughs> I didn't have to go up. Uh, yeah, it's just used to walk about getting my eggs, yeah. I had to act surprised every time. <laughs> Did your parents care that you were getting all that chocolate and eating it? No. Yeah, yeah, like, you could have chocolate whenever you want. See, that's just so different to how we grew up. In a meadow bright with daffodils, Sway Haley danced on Easter's radiant day. <laughs> Beneath the azure sky's gentle gleam, she spun in joy, a sight serene. Her laughter echoed through the air as petals danced around her fair. With every step, she brought to light, chasing shadows into the night. In her eyes, she promised of spring, a new beginning, a song to sing. I was a spring baby. Don't fucking ruin my poem. <laughs> With each bloom, a story untold in Haley's heart unfolds. So let's rejoice in Easter's, Easter's grace as Haley dances, a smile on her face. Or in her joy, we find our own in the seasons of hope brightly shone. Right. There's a little Easter poem for you, Hales. Chat GPT. Right, you're ready to show off your masterpiece. Well, I show mine off I've been waiting longer. Yeah. So, this, this is my masterpiece. It consists of a tomb, I mean a cave, where the baby Jesus went. Uh, three crosses at the top, and yeah. So, oh, and on the door of the cave is written in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And Jesus. So there you go. Mine has many mistakes. And um, I've made a little Easter bunny. Holding his little Easter egg. <laughs> Little Easter. Leave a comment in the comment section who won. That is this year's Easter paintings done. We've had fun. We're gonna go and tidy up now, I suppose. Catch up with you later. Bye! Bye! So I'm just through doing some editing um, because I know that I'm really far behind this week. Just because obviously I'm not been feeling the best. I think today's been the worst day. Um, there has been a lot going on today. But I think by far the worst part is this. <laughs> I've been having a lot of pain in my wrist and my thumb recently. I think I like pulled something along here yesterday. It wasn't like so bad to the point where I was like, oh this needs seen. It was just so annoying. I've left it and it's been fine. So I needed to change the battery. We had just finished our dinner. I like went to like crack my knuckles because I do. When like I went to bend it back like that, sort of pushed that way to it, there was this just horrible like it popped out and I was like oh crap and then like when I moved my finger it could sort of popped back it was really sore like the pain was all down here and the tip of my finger was like tingling it started to swell you could see that the shape of the thumb was not right <laughs> like Michael's like I don't think your thumb should be the shape of an S I was like, yeah, probably not. I've broken a couple of fingers before and I've just dealt with them myself. I've popped a couple out of like the the socket bit here. It's been fine. And Michael's like, no, I really think with everything going on, you should go and get it checked. I was like, oh, it'll be fine. Just go and get me a lollipop stick and some tape and stuff. And he's like, you're being an idiot. And I was like, probably, but I just, I would rather just see how it goes than 
a whole night in like A and E. So I've got it like this lollipop stick. I've had to put a bit of tape on it because when I snapped it, it was really sharp. I've tied it nice and tight. If it gets sore or starts to swell up really bad or anything like that, then we'll go. I just would rather be at home. I am managing to move it and I did check that I, like when I was moving my thumb before I put it in this, that it wasn't like totally skew with, like the bone was sticking out or anything like that. It wasn't anything like that. So I think what's happened is I've just popped it out because I have osteopenia, because of lamb, um, my bones are just very thin and very weak. I really am looking forward to better days, better weather, just so there's a less boring days for me and more upbeat, fun content for you guys. Because even I am getting fed up with being stuck in the house listening to me. So um, yeah, uh, the weather is starting to get on the, the nicer side, although it's in the minus tonight. We are getting blue skies and a wee bit of warmer days. Fingers crossed for better days ahead and let's just, I'll, well, I'll just keep you updated on how this goes, uh, but I'm sure it will be fine like all the rest. I have, you could probably tell, the fingers in the past that I've broken. <laughs> Keeping positive regardless of situations. That's kind of the motto here and for me anyway. So I'll catch you in the morning if I'm up to anything. Fingers crossed. Better days tomorrow. Bye. We need 20p. They got the pennies, Haley. No, I've got pennies. Oh wait, my purse is in my jar. Okay, oh, please tell me how the 20p is going to Hey, legend. Yeah, we're in Abbey Moor. Um, we had to we had to collect some cat litter and some sponges and some other housey bits. And oh, Michael needs to get some little bits and bobs from Aldi. I'm not feeling very well at all, and I'm starting to get really hungry. So we're just gonna get a little fish and chips. Uh, to share. But I'm just so exhausted. But yeah, I'm looking forward to getting home. It's sleet here today, so it's like rainy snow. Yeah, that's about the gist of what's going on today. We've just had our Primark rummage around. There's not a whole lot actually, because they're in the midst of like, it's like spring summer wear, wouldn't you say? Yeah. There's a lot of spring summer stuff. And I got some really nice bits, but like a lot of it. Where we live in the north of Scotland, the Highlands, there's no point having a massive summer wardrobe. <laughs> no. Because you just won't ever get to get through it all. I got some nice summer, like spring summery bits. Oh, yeah. yeah, just some little bits. Uh, we are just going to go now quickly to TK Maxx because we only have an hour until it closes. So. Of a quick rummage in TK Maxx and then out to the retail bit because I'll be able to eat and drink. Nice. Yeah. Where are we going today? McDonald's, Burger King? Well, we can just float around and just do as we please, but we're not in any rush for anything. We sure we're not in. in any time restraint. This was just a spur of the minute trip. They're the funnest ones. Yeah. Let's find a place and go and scout. But there's still. I really want to try the elephant bronzing drops because there's supposed to be a dupe for the drunk elephant drops, but my Primark doesn't have anything like that. Like, there's our Primark. <laughs> oh. It's tiny. It's the the homeware section is like less than the size of my living room. It's like maybe the size of my bedroom. Um, there's not a whole lot to it, um, but it's what we've got. So there's the. I, I think mean, it's not the worst prime market. No. I would still take it over Edinburgh's one. You know the, yeah. the central one. That was horrible. But it's just I really wanted the the uh, um, the jeep for the drunk elephant drops because the drunk elephant drops are thirty something pound for a small yeah. tube, and it's just because. When we get the warm weather, putting on even my tinted um, foundation stuff 
um, you know, you find yourself getting really oily and it just looking a bit rubbish that day. So if you just put on some of the bronze and drops and you're just giving yourself that bit of warmth and then you don't have to do anything else. A bit of a glow. A bit yeah, of a glow. but it might be that I have to just buy the drunk elf and drops. Well, that would and also just, solve the problem. just use them, them sparingly. <laughs> but, yeah. We'll have a wee nosy and tiki mask because I love a wee rummish there. Michael goes off when, like, we look through some of the bits together, but then Michael takes off and then he just comes waddling over with like a whole bunch of stuff. He's like, Don't any of this. First of all, I don't waddle. Second of all, I scurry. Third of all, I find you clothes. Of good he, he does. He found me a couple of really nice bits last time. So. How exceptional taste. Yeah. Mm. We only have an hour in there, so yeah, we shall be, like be a... making the most of it. A quick, a quick scurry. See, yeah. you scurry too now. <laughs> <laughs> That's found you many things. Is this for my phone? Yes. Is it? Mm -hmm. Right, hang on. I want to see your reaction. See the effort I put in. I really and you do nothing. I really do like the purple thing. I'm just not comfortable with it. No. Good afternoon everybody, uh, it is Monday and I woke up in the middle of the night, my blood pressure was very very low, it was 79 over 53, so yeah, pretty low and it woke me up and I was just feeling rotten, I was feeling so like lightheaded and just short of breath, all that sort of stuff. I sat up, uh, Put some extra pillows behind me, had a good old drink, waited for it to go back up and then got back to sleep but I was still asleep with extra pillows so it's a bit uncomfortable. Yeah so I phoned the doctors this morning about the oral infect bacterial infection in my mouth and how the chemists are refusing to stop the medication that I was prescribed. He's gonna look into it and figure out what else we could do to fix the issue in my mouth because it's so bad there's like sores underneath my tongue it's like burning all the time and he said that my blood pressure dropping in particular lying down is something that I should let Newcastle know so um, I've called them and I'm waiting for a phone call back and in the meantime I have to go and pick up a blood pressure chart from the health centre so that was many phone calls actually. Uh, the doctor phoned and basically he's not a clue on what he can do with my mouth because the pharmacy here can't stock anything that would be needed and I can't take fluconazole. They're afraid to put me on even one course of fluconazole because it interacts with my serolimus. It's being passed through to the pharmacy at, uh, at Ragmo Hospital and the consultants will pick it up and try and come up with something hopefully. Yeah, that's where we're at with that. And the transplant coordinator from Newcastle phoned me back. They can't do anything. It needs to be passed to my consultant for them to do something 
for them to then pass it to Newcastle. So the GP pointed me in the wrong direction there, but she let me know that they were in discussions today about the next satellite clinic to have an appointment on the 26th of April in Edinburgh again for satellite clinic, providing nothing changes until then where I would have to go down to Newcastle. So it depends if I can get the MRI and the heart test before then. Then I'll know whether or not it's Edinburgh or Newcastle I go to, but as of now, it's Edinburgh, so we have that. <laughs> so I phoned up my consultant at Raidmore, um, his secretary answered, and I've left, a, left her a message to pass on to the consultant. So she said she'll let him know and get back to me. Hopefully today, if not, it should be tomorrow. Ugh, it's such a... Uh, I mean, those of you who have a condition, a disease, an illness where it's where long-term care is needed and lots of investigation and all that sort of stuff or who's been through any sort of transplant assessments and things will know how draining it, it all is because every day it's on your mind every day I struggle with something and it's there as a constant reminder of everything and upcoming appointments or, or make you nervous because they're on your mind tests you've never had before all the what ifs and and it can just get very draining very easily especially when you're doing the job of what your doctor is supposed to do as well hopefully there's some resolution to this and it's not another issue with the whole heart thing I mean I'm not silly I know that having a long-term severe lung condition affects your heart it just does it puts a lot of stress on your heart the longer this goes on the more damage it's gonna gonna face the SVTs I know aren't linked to my lung condition, but perhaps the low blood pressure is to do with my lungs and the sooner we get sorted with that, the sooner I won't have to suffer anymore, hopefully. No, I know what you mean. Because that, along with the issue with my legs, is all that linked. Like, there's just not enough communication, I think, between everybody no. to know what the heck is going on. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to go with it and see. Roll with it, that's all you can do. But I think to get me out of this funk, I think we're gonna try head off to Inverness. Not really for any particular reason other than just to get out of the house. We'll get a Costa or a Starbucks. I could do with a wee rummage around Dunelm. It's been a long time since I've been to Dunelm when they have Disney stuff in. But I'll keep you updated. I'm Seven P. 
There, there is two. There is two. We're just being greedy. Do you reveal Yeah. Uh, 50 p. I know. Okay, so that's the actually... bargain of the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We are at the filling station, um, just need to get some fuel for the car. If you haven't noticed, look at this, look at this. He is the softest, cutest little Simba ever. So I simply had to have him. Gonna go next to Mufasa. Yes, I already have a Simba Teddy, but this one's soft. <laughs> The man in the fuel station is looking at me like I'm mad because I'm sat here talking to myself. But I don't care. It is freezing, freezing cold. And we went to Costa and I have decaf vanilla latte. It is 6pm so we're just gonna get our KFC chips I think. And then we've got, we got a pizza deal in Tesco's because we thought while we're here we'll just get our Tesco shop. So we have all the food in the back. And the back of the car is so full, it's not even funny. Alright, uh, shall pop off and catch up with you. I had a Costa cookie, it was amazing. Oh yeah, Michael had it. What was it? Mini egg. Mini egg. Costa cookie from Costa. Yeah, it's like actually like changing. See, I can't risk things like that because they could be left out on the display. Like the Costa cookie shelves and the amount of times that I have seen it and thought, oh, that would be nice. Yeah, it's like the Costa cookie shelf is like the amount of times that I have seen flies and all sorts on those dis in those display things. So I just don't risk it anymore. Quite wise to you. Oh, I heard... Oh, what did I say? Yeah, I heard from Inverness as well, one of the consultants, but I'll update you and stuff when I get home about it all. And I will show you our massive car load of stuff. And we actually got some really freaking good deals today, so... Yeah, I will see you when we get Excuse the attire of Reese and Cold and we're just in. Look at him! Oh yeah, I got one of these uh, vinyl figures and it's like a mystery one. And um, I got Steve. <laughs> Everyone loves I got Steve, who's cool. I'll have to start collecting them. No. <laughs> Hey. Oh, wait, 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 can I show you the present that you got? Yeah, yeah, because Michael got me the Simba, so I got him something. Have you shown the Simba? Yeah. yeah. Filling up the car. What have you put you in there? Oh, this is what Haley got me. Hey, it's a Dustin from Stranger Things in his little battle outfit when he goes to fight them all. Look, they do them all for that episode, you know, the ones that... Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Are you going to keep it in or out of the box? I don't That's know. The question. I don't know. People keep them in, but I... What do you think? What's yours? I think, I think I'm going to be a freak and keep it in this box. Yeah, I want them all now, though. Uh, Tesco shop. We got these. 57p. And they're the Tesco finest carrot cake. We have a little later, the nice warm drink. Some crisps, lettuce, chicken, meat three meat balls, normal milk, almond milk, times two of each. Some more bananas, black coffee cheese, butter. Uh, we've got some salted caramel and chocolate hot cross buns. I think it wedges. Can I try to put it in? Don't judge. We found this. Listen, I was sold. They said best cereal. <laughs> I was sold by it, you know. I have, argue with that. I have to see if it really is the best cereal. Mints, super noodles, cherry alpro soya um, yogurt. This is Michael's 
with fuzz and cabri daily crunchy pasta cucumber two tins of tomatoes got these to try they just look good vegan meal corn nuggets Natural cheese, dip, donuts, Ooh. and my push Oh yeah, this is our pizza for tonight. You should tell me the story about how oh we had to get it. We had to wait about 10 minutes for this couple to pick a pizza. And they wouldn't even move out the way so we could like just get in, get ours and go. So we have this. It's the big cheese pizza with a barbecue dip and Cajun onion rings. And like we soup. have non-alcoholic Corona beer stuff to have pizza and beer. <laughs> I would also like to say the 10 minutes doesn't sound bad when you say that story but it was like a real 10 minutes. Yeah no like it was a was genuine like 10 minutes. You're stood there waiting for 10 minutes. Yeah. The rest of this stuff. So from Dunelm I got this because it looked very springy you know and these were if you if you were to buy this separately, this vase was four pound, and each of these was two pound. Um, but uh, all together was eight pound, and I just thought it was very nice for like spring. So that's going through the house. Uh, my bedside lamp is broken, so I just got this cheap little one, um, and it'll take up less space anyway. Um, I also put these in there now because they were reduced down to one pound forty. So you put them in your fridge, um, and it sort of tidies everything up, like just a little fridgy one. So I got two of that shape and one of this shape. You know, so they're for the fridge. I got some more bubbles for the cats. Michael got himself this Indian teakwood uh, reed diffuser from the side of the bed. Maybe you should smell it. Because I've always got tons of my knives. So. This was a must have. Um, this is a super noodle bowl. My very own bowl for my super noodles. And it came with curry. And it came with a um, pack of noodles as well, free. So I love that. Some hand soap, some more of my Powerade. For the best bargains of today, this was £20 down to 5 A brushed cotton duvet set. It's so soft. And if my granny mom has taught me anything, it's that don't just get one at that price. multiple so I got another one and this one's in a white so I got a white and I don't know what colour that would be like a sand colour yeah five pound for a double duvet brush cotton Eden set and I got this as well this was 28 pounds down to 14 and it's this big thick soft um, knit throw so I got this for the bed just how cosy and how soft and nice. Those were like the real stand up bargains of the day. Mmm, that's really nice. Yeah. Michael also got me a little keychain fuggler. It's one that I don't have and I put it onto my. Ta da! Mm, look at him! Look at him! Is there a modern or a snow fuggler? He's so cute. So he just sits on now my oxygen concentrator. Yeah, that was what we got today. Oh, I'm exhausted though. I'm so, so, so tired. But I must rest. Yes. Very tired. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon. It's Saturday the 30th of March. There is a lockdown pack here with appointments. One of the days that we went to Inverness, I had spoke about my blood pressure and stuff. And I got a call back from a consultant that I hadn't spoke to before. He was saying that it's a difficult one because the bisoprolol that they put me on to control the SVTs can lower your blood pressure. But they run the risk if they take me off of the bisoprolol, increasing again the frequencies on my SVT. So in his opinion he thinks it's best we just leave things as it is wait for the cardiologist appointment and see if they have any input on what it could be caused by or how best to fix this or at least control it so there was that uh when it came to my uh bacterial infection in my mouth yeah he's he doesn't know why he has been asked to 
fix this he thinks it's a GP's problem to fix and so that got put back to the GP don't know why he didn't have any input at all but anyway he just said that he would send the letter to my GPs and explain everything and he also wants my GP to do a lie down sit down test for my blood pressure see if it's affected by that um, so they've been asked to do that not got an appointment through for that though. Yeah, so the the GPs did call and basically they're just putting me on a higher dose of the Nystan stuff. So I'm on, instead of one mil four times a day, I'm on five mil four times a day for that. So it isn't doing anything so far. Anyway, I got a bunch of appointments through. I have got my appointment for my cardiology and that's on Tuesday so that'll be the second. I'm seeing a professor of cardiology, he, she, I don't know, um, will see what's going on and what we do from there. Michael is just back with Toby. It is, we've had rain, snow and hailstone today, so they're absolutely soaked. Do you want to get a picture of me and Toby? Yeah. This is us being there for like five minutes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the weather has just been wild. The The next appointment I got through was for the 9th of April and that is my ILD clinic. So um, I've got to arrive half an hour before my appointment to have breathing tests and such done. I'm nervous about it to be honest because I don't think it will go too well. <laughs> I, I, I can already tell, I, I just know that my lung capacity is a lot less than the last time I would have had a breathing test six months ago. I struggle a lot more so I mean all these things I'm going to bring up, I'm going to start writing a list and bring up with the consultants and usually my oxygen nurse is there as well so um, she'll be a good one to maybe talk to with. Uh, in terms of being out of breath and the last appointment that's come through so far is for Edinburgh. So on the 26th of April I have my transplant consultant appointment again. So it's exciting and nervous. It's, it's like you're excited to go to Edinburgh and see things and get up to things. You know it's a little adventure but then you, you know you're nervous about the reason you're there. Yeah, hopefully at least we'll have the cardiologist's input for the consultant that I see in Edinburgh. I haven't got the appointment through for the MRI yet, but hopefully soon. Yeah, so full on appointments this month. Lots to get up to. We're not going to book a hotel yet because we're going to leave it last minute like we did last time because we got like really good deals. And we're keeping our fingers crossed for a good deal for the Virgin Hotel because it's right next to Harry Potter shops on Diagonale. So <laughs> we're fingers crossed for that, are we, Mike? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it'll Definitely. be a nice experience for sure. But we'll see. We're just kind of looking into things and seeing what we want to get up to when we're there because we'll have all day Saturday. No need to rush back or anything. It'll be good. I think that's it in terms of updating you on all my appointments so far. The only other thing I would say is my dentist was supposed to, last time I seen her would it be November time. She told me that she was going to book another block of appointments for uh, the beginning of what this year is. When I got sent through my appointments, I have one appointment in May. That's it. That's all I have. So I've sort of run out of faith of getting teeth this year from my dentist. Yeah, getting anything fixed. So I don't know what to do. I don't know whether just to stop putting money aside and just go myself to like a private dentist and get something sorted. I don't know. Yeah, so that's that. Anyway, uh, but we will end this video here. <laughs> we'll end this video here and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.